Hello, I'm Andrew Pritchard, and thank you for watching today's Canada Regional Forecast, brought to you by Nutrient Act Solutions. So you look at the jet stream here on Friday morning, we continue to watch this big ridge centered over the central United States right now. We've got a big trough hanging out off the coast of the Pacific Ocean. That is going to ride up and over the top of this ridge over the next couple of days. And that's going to kind of flatten things out across uh, the U.S. and Canada here. It's kind of zonal flow across, the uh, again, the U.S. and Canada border. Uh, which can allow a progressive pattern to set in. So one that doesn't make us get stuck in uh, really one pattern or another. Going to keep things a bit cooler and wetter overall across the Canadian prairies, especially the southern prairies, an area that really needed some rainfall is going to be getting it over the next 7 to 10 days. But really, as we look out over the next 10 days, uh, pretty much everyone across the Canadian prairies is high production ag area going to be seeing some opportunities for some rainfall and seeing some opportunities for some cooler temperatures as several storm systems make their way through the area over the next week or so. Temperature anomalies over the next 10 days. Again, we'll really focus on the five to seven day forecast here, and that does include a lot of cooler weather across the Canadian prairies. It includes a lot of uh, rain across, especially again, the Southern prairies. As we look at the next week, week one precipitation anomalies on the left, Week two on the right, and there you see it, focused on the southern prairies uh, over the next seven days or so, but really over the next seven to ten days plus, bringing an opportunity for some precipitation to pretty much the entire Canadian prairie region. So look at the satellite picture here on Friday morning. This beautiful satellite image that I love using is a little bit broken here. Uh, looking at uh, some of the early morning imagery here. Again, we've got the, the, the uh, counterclockwise flow around this upper level low across Quebec and Ontario this morning. Uh, we've got some showers making their way across parts of uh, central Alberta and Saskatchewan. We'll take a look at that here uh, with the radar picture here as we check in on Friday morning across the Canadian prairies. Again, anywhere from Grand Prairie down toward Edmonton, dealing with some rain showers today. You can continue on over towards Saskatoon, parts of central and uh, southern Saskatchewan uh, with some light rain showers. And then overnight, we saw a couple light showers here across parts of southern Alberta, uh, but no significant precipitation in that area. As we take a look at the European model now, we're looking at 500 millibar height anomalies. We're watching a couple of systems here. Uh, this one right here, bringing some light rain shower activity again to parts of central and southern Alberta. Uh, as I showed it here, we noted on the upper level satellite imagery here, or on the, uh, the visible satellite picture there, that, that kind of broken loop. Uh, you saw the upper level low spinning away in this area. We're watching this big trough right here off the Pacific coast, and this is the one that's gonna kind of move up and through the prairie region, flattening things out as we go into the next week. Let's go ahead, we'll play this, and we'll, we'll step through time with it. So starting out Friday, Going into the weekend, here comes this system making its way up and into the southern prairie region. Uh, the first round of heavy rain making their way, its way into the area now as we get to the weekend and into early next week. Uh, we've got another trough kind of reloading now in that same area. And this has the makings of a pretty big storm system across the Canadian prairie. We're looking out about a week into the future, so details, of course, going to be a bit muddy at this point. Uh, we'll have an update on this one. You know, Eric will mention it on Monday morning, and then Tuesday when I come back with your next Canadian regional forecast, uh, we'll really have some clarity on this. But uh, again, the, the storm system that has the potential to uh, uh, be rather interesting across the Canadian prairies and bring another dose of heavy rain uh, to someone, if not a lot of people. Uh, so let's go ahead, let's take a look at the uh, the winds here at 500 millibar. This helps us kind of pick out our short waves, you know, those patches of stronger jet stream winds that help kind of drive uh, the interesting weather here, the precipitation. You see one right now across central Alberta. That's what's bringing the, the light rain shower activity to this region. Here are the strong winds associated with this trough, bringing some cooler air into parts of the Corn Belt in the United States. Let's take the drawings off though. Let's see where we are headed. We'll do the same thing here, bringing it to Friday. Note this big upper level low uh, right now making its way uh, ashore here off to the west. As we head into the weekend, starting to see some of the, the stronger upper level winds kind of pushing into uh, the northern plains of the U.S. and also parts of the southern prairies. And that's what's going to bring another round of uh, uh, potentially some strong storms with some heavy rainfall going to be the bigger story here in the Canadian prairies. And you see kind of a series. You see this first wave. Here comes a second wave pushing in uh, right now across the southern prairies. And then as we head into, we're in Wednesday now, heading into Thursday and Friday, heading into next weekend. Check that out. Now you see another uh, area of very strong upper level winds. This next storm system pushing into the area. This is the one that, again, uh, with the combination of a couple factors here, we'll have to see how it plays out, but does have the potential uh, to be a pretty significant storm system across the Canadian prairie late next week into next weekend. The temperature anomaly forecast, you're going to see a lot of blue and green as you focus in on the prairies here. And that, of course, 
is uh, temperatures here anywhere from five to 15 degrees cooler than average. We're talking about Fahrenheit, so really about five to 10 degrees cooler than average. Uh, when we talk about Celsius, I didn't realize this map was showing Fahrenheit right now, but uh, we'll, we'll do our best here. We'll go back, we'll take the drawings off starting on Friday. Seeing some warmer air in advance of this first storm system, but there you see the cooler air spilling in on the backside quickly this weekend. So uh, really across Alberta and Saskatchewan, anywhere from five to 10 degrees Celsius below average as we start the weekend out. These cooler temperatures hang on as we go into early next week. We're in Tuesday now, Wednesday, really seeing these cooler temperatures across the entire Canadian Prairie region uh, as we go through the early part of next week. It's not until we get to late next week Remember, late next week, we're talking about the potential for a large storm system. That means warm air advection in advance of it, cool air coming in on the back side. Uh, you could put your cyclone right about here. That would be where our area of low pressure should develop as we get to the end of next week. But uh, cooler temperatures for the, ma uh, the majority of the next week. It's not until this potential larger storm system uh, works its way into the region late next week into next weekend that maybe we get some warmer air advection uh, to kind of lift some uh, seasonably appropriate summer warmth back into the region. Take a look at the, the water vapor here, or the, the precipitable water. We're actually going to skip ahead because I've got the, uh, the instability forecast here, and this will tell the story just as well. Uh, so for time's sake, we'll keep things moving. This will show you here, even though we expect a wetter pattern here across the Canadian prairie, especially the southern regions, uh, it's not one that's going to bring a lot of severe weather, and that's great news. It's great when we can kind of eat away at this uh, precipitation deficit, kind of make up some of the dryness here uh, without doing so at the detriment of bringing in severe storms with large hail damaging winds and maybe some tornadoes. So as we head through the early part of the weekend, here's this first storm system making its way through. You're seeing some lower level instability here across the southern prairie. Uh, perhaps some strong storms making its way through uh, parts of southern Alberta, southern Saskatchewan, Friday afternoon and evening. Perhaps as we get into Saturday afternoon and evening, another strong storm across maybe far southern Manitoba. But uh, I'm not terribly concerned about this one. I think maybe some thunderstorms, some heavy rain, maybe a strong storm or two producing some large hail and gusty winds, but not a very volatile uh, environment as we talk about severe weather this weekend. The next wave comes through here on Monday or Sunday evening. Uh, and again, maybe a strong storm or two across southern Alberta, southern Saskatchewan. Not concerned about a big severe weather threat, though. As we head into next week, we see our next storm system start to make its way in. Check this out across the northern plains. I am concerned about, uh, you know, the potential for some significant severe weather right now across the northern plains of the United States late next week. You're starting to see some of this instability work its way back into the prairie, though, uh, with this big storm system starting to punch its way into the prairie region again. A lot of question marks but the potential to be a pretty interesting storm system late next week. A lot of potential outcomes here, you know, some heavy rain for a lot of folks, perhaps some severe weather. If this uh, air mass continues to work its way back in here, we do get the return of a warm, humid, volatile air mass could set the stage for some significant severe storms, uh, strong winds possible with this, uh, this storm system, a warm air advection, perhaps bringing some heat, cool air advection on the backside, bringing back a reinforcing shot of cold weather, a lot of moving parts. Uh, and I'm not trying to throw any certainties at you. I'm just letting you know that a uh, cool and rainy for the next week or so, but then big question mark at the end of next week could be a fairly significant storm system today. Low risk for some strong storms across, again, parts of southern Alberta, parts of southern Saskatchewan. Uh, a low risk maybe for some strong winds, maybe some, uh, some large hail with some of the strongest storms in that area. Not really that concerned overall, and I'd probably keep this kind of along and south of this region. If anyone's going to see strong storms, maybe the Calgary area over towards Regina. But again, not overly concerned as we head through the weekend here for any significant severe weather. So we look at the precipitation forecast then that accompanies all of this. Starting off on Friday, again, seeing some of this light rain make its way through the area, perhaps some storms flaring up across the south here as we get into uh, Friday evening, Friday night into Saturday morning. Heading into Sunday now, seeing that next wave make its way through, another round of showers and storms across the southern prairie here as we end the weekend, getting into early next week. Keeping rain in the forecast here across the high plains of central Alberta here as we get through uh, the early part of next week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And then as we get into the late next week, 
now you're starting to see it kind of organized out here. If I took this loop out any further, uh, you'd kind of see how things are, are, are starting to play out. But again, question marks abound. I want to kind of hold off on the details, but just check it out. Some snow perhaps on the backside here. It's getting to be closer to that time of the year. Uh, but with this having the potential to be a pretty significant storm system, some strong cold air advection may be enough to bring some snow into some of the high area, high elevation uh, northern regions here of British Columbia by the time we get to the end of next week, possibly. Total accumulated precipitation. I'm going to play the loop out for the next week and you're going to see a couple things. The most notable, significant precipitation across the southern prairies, an area we badly needed it. And by the time we get to the end of the loop, you're going to see more widespread precipitation in this region trying to push its way into the prairie. So let me take the drawings off. Let's just hit play. There's your southern prairie region precipitation. Now at the end of the week, you start to see it coming in from the west right there. That's our potential late week weekend storm system as we get into uh, around the August 16th through the 18th time frame. Zooming in on Alberta, we'll play this out here. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll step through time just so I can kind of break it in half for you. Starting on Friday, taking it through the first part of the week. Uh, so all the way through Wednesday now. And again, you can kind of draw a line here. We're really focused on the southern prairie for significant precipitation. Not totally dry to the north, but more isolated, scattered in nature, uh, where you got the more widespread uniform precipitation off to the south as we go through the next week. If I take it out another couple of days ending on Friday, that's where you're starting to see the more widespread opportunities for precipitation across the entire region starting to make their way in. There you see it coming in from the left, and that would be uh, uh, the potential precipitation for next weekend. So you look at the high temperatures then for the next five days here, cooler temperatures coming in uh, into the region, warmer off to the south. Your high temperatures for the day on Friday, anywhere from the low teens to the north to the uh, near 30 towards the south. Cooler air widespread Saturday and Sunday keeping it uh, cooler even as we head into the early part of next week. Here's Monday and then Tuesday. It would be late next week, perhaps warm air advection, bringing some of the warmer temperatures back in as we get to Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of next week. Looking off to the east, same story. We'll go ahead and we'll step through time with this one as we get through the middle part of the week, stopping here on Wednesday evening, keeping things active off to the south. This is again where we expect the more widespread uniform precipitation here, southern Saskatchewan, southern Alberta. Not likely completely dry off to the north, but going to be more isolated in nature, perhaps especially across southern portions or central portions here uh, being maybe missed by some of the precipitation here over the next couple of uh, over the next uh, several days, I should say. And then taking it out all the way through uh, the end of the loop here to Friday morning, getting towards the end of the week, starting to see it come in from the left side of your screen here. Uh, some of that precipitation that may fill in that gap right in this region next weekend. High temperatures for the next five days, still warm off to the south here, but a front is making its way into the region. So warm for the day off to the south on Friday, cooler as we get into the day on Saturday, temperatures in the mid teens to near 20 degrees. So we get into Sunday and Monday and Tuesday, keeping those cooler temperatures in the area, high temperatures mostly in the upper teens, lower 20s. Uh, but then again, remember we get into late next week, perhaps bringing some warmth back into the region. As always, Eric Snodgrass will have an in-depth look at the evolution of the next one to two weeks in our Monday Morning Ag Forecast video, and I'll have your next check-in here with the Canadian region on Tuesday morning. Have a great day, and have a wonderful weekend.